Okay, so we are talking today with our nerd on call, Ryan Hi. Aldrich. <laughs> Love having him in studio with us. And we were talking about internet uh, and social media backlash yeah. today. So there, the internet outcry against Minnesota dentist Walter Palmer after his involvement in the killing of Cecil the Lion in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's been really tough, really fast and furious. And this story has really been so, uh, circulating on social media. Palmer's life has been unraveled from this. Yeah. Um, and uh, we want to start talking about this. A lot of people saying on social media that Dr. Palmer is really getting what he deserves. Yeah, and you know, some people, it's easy to jump on a bandwagon on, uh -huh. on somebody and say, hey, this guy, he, he did something that was wrong. Uh, the problem is, is now when you do something wrong or, or if you might even call it a mistake, you can't take it back anymore. The social media outcry goes crazy and now it's a global phenomenon. So uh, Dr. Palmer, while I don't necessarily think everybody needs to sympathize with him, his life has changed forever. He's lost his business, thousands of, uh, of Yelp reviews on his Facebook page. So he's shuttered his doors. Mm -hmm. All of his employees lost their jobs. His kids going back to school, it's gonna be pretty rough for them. He's received death threats. Uh, his life has changed forever. And his face, as you can see, even see on the screen, is recognizable. He's considered the most hated man on the internet right now. Yeah, his life has drastically changed. It's not the, like before where you would just make phone calls to someone that you felt uh, offended by. This time you have comments, people see those comments, Comments, they write their own so there's a whole trail of this yeah and, and a lot of people say hey he's getting what he deserves but the problem is what if the story wasn't true right there was a Pew Research study in September of 2014 that said that most Amer or 64 percent of Americans get their new or I'm sorry use Facebook every single day mm -hmm. and 30 percent of those people get their news from Facebook now we've all received stories on our Facebook timeline that are questionable in their accuracy. They're from a blogger or something. Mm -hmm. And once we see that story several different times, we start to think, oh, this is probably legit. This is probably a real story. And then we start sharing it and liking it and it starts becoming sort of a big thing. Um, one thing you got to keep in mind is when it comes to social media and bloggers is they're not reporters. Right. Uh, for example, a reporter has to have a couple of different sources to verify a story before it can be released. Well, a blogger can write whatever they want. And in today's day and age with digital media, I could create a picture within minutes that looks legitimate, and if I shared that on social media, it could ruin someone's life without really thinking about it. And it's so easy to just see those things on Facebook and be convinced that this is true. Yeah. Because you see that you're so emotionally uh, attached to this story or whatever image or video, and uh, you get hooked and you share it like you yeah. were saying, and then that spreads and spreads and spreads. So. Um, how can people really, uh, you know, check the sources or know what's true? Well, for example, one of the best ways to do it is I use this site all the time when I get something sensational on my news feed. Go to mm -hmm. Snopes.com, S-N-O-P-E-S.com. And it's a great website that'll give you all kinds of facts. So if you say, oh, uh, there's five Fridays in August and that means some terrible thing's going to happen. Let me look that up. You go to Snopes.com and it'll tell you, oh, no, this has been around since the 1800s. Don't worry about it. Or if you look up the Cease of the Lion story, it'll mm -hmm. give you the actual facts of the story and things like that. But one thing we want to do is calm, be calm. When we see something going on on the internet and we want, we get a real and emotional charge yeah. about it, we want to reach out and start relieving some of our emotions. But the problem is, is there's a real person behind that story. And now Dr. Palmer, regardless of how we feel about what he did with Cease of the Lion, his life has changed forever. And we should consider that because there's real effects to this man's life, his children's life, his wife's life, and his business. All of those people that work for him are now looking for jobs because of the mistake that he made. And we may not agree with what he did, but is it right that the mob sort of overran him mm -hmm. and changed his life forever? Yeah, that's tough. Um, yeah. Ryan, can you explain the app of the week for us? Oh, yes. Yeah. So the app of the week, this is great. So this is called Stop, Breathe, Think. Okay. Uh, it, studies have shown that everyone can benefit from a little time in mindful meditation every day. But a lot of people go, well, what do you do? How do I do it? Well, this app first asks you questions when you start using it. It says, how are you feeling? Are you anxious? Are you tired? Are you irritable? And then what it does is it designs a very specific five minute meditation that you can walk through and just be calm and breezy. It's, you can go to uh, stopbreathethink.org. It's free. You can use it on Google. 
uh, Android, or you can also use it on an iPhone, and it is a really great thing. For just five minutes, it can help you uh, relieve depression, pain, uh, all kinds of ill effects that you might be suffering just from our busy life. Stop, breathe, think allows you to just take a few minutes, just ah. Everyone needs that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Ryan, thank you for being here with us in the studio. You're